for over a decade. American policymakers have worried that China might be a potential rival to the United States. However, the U.S. government has not implemented a clear plan for how to address and react to changes in the U.S. China relationship. Columbia University's Richard K. Vett sees this sort of intellectual paralysis as a pressing problem. He argues that the longer that there's no choice, the more dangerous the possibilities of unanticipated confrontation and escalation become. The issue evinces a sharp division between national security experts, who, according to Betts, fall into one of two categories. Either they believe the United States should accommodate the rise of China and recognize it as a potential superpower with the natural aspirations and same prerogatives as we have, or they hope to contain China and forthrightly set out of strategy and set of alliance relationships to prevent China's rise from going in directions we don't like. Quote, These two strategies are mutually exclusive. Drawing on the history of the Cold War and the success of containment against the Soviet Union, the University of Chicago's John Mearsheimer and Harvard University's Stephen Walt argue that the United States will have no choice but to adopt the strategy of containment against China. Preventing the rise of a peer competitor, in Mearsheimer's view, is a vital strategic interest. He believes it would be wise for the United States to hem in China now, while the balance of power is so greatly in America's favor. However, while this sort of strategy is designed to increase U.S. security, it might actually make the world more dangerous. As the Charles Koch Institute's William Ruger points out, aggressive containment could create a self-fulfilling prophecy, where we push the Chinese to be more of a peer competitor or enemy than they really are. Quote, the forward deployment of U.S. military forces in Asia, for example, is seen by the Chinese as deeply unsettling, fueling the sort of security spiral that has undermined friendly relationships throughout international history. If the United States is to choose containment, Barry Posen of the Massachusetts Institute of Technology notes, sensitivity to this issue must be a critical part of intelligent containment. In fact, it might be that technological, economic, and diplomatic trends make an active U.S. role in containing China unnecessary. Eugene Gilks, of the University of Texas at Austin, contends that anti-access area denial A2AD technology, which makes it so difficult for the United States to put close pressure on China, also makes it very difficult for China itself to break out of the so-called First Island Chain that surrounds it. Goltz argues that this creates a stable situation in which both the United States and China are incentivized to avoid aggression and expansion. China is also surrounded by a significant number of growing countries and it is in each state's national interest to oppose Chinese expansionism. Managing these alliances from Washington seems like a gargantuan undertaking, making containment more difficult. However, Christopher Priebel of the Cato Institute makes the point that without U.S. involvement, China's neighbors would have a much stronger incentive to cooperate in opposing China on their own. After all, suggests Ruger, it remains a serious possibility that Chinese economic growth will hit a ceiling and a real threat to the status quo in East Asia will never